So our last diagram is a tree diagram, and this is essentially the most important for us, uh, only because this is your warm and fuzzy question for the next exam. This is page one question we should be practicing enough so we're guaranteed to get it right. It's actually the question we're going to have on the worksheet on Tuesday. Uh, there are two of them in your uh, homework packet. There are three in these lecture notes and I'll be doing um, an example in class on Tuesday as well before we even do our worksheet so that way we've seen way more tree diagrams than we will ever want to see. <laughs> so um, the tree diagram allows us to go from marginals and conditionals to our ands. So it's it's different than our Venn, uh, our Venn diagram and our contingency table, which have ands, and then allow us to kind of find all the other probabilities. So first thing we need to do, again, as always, is read through this question, translate what we have. We can see at the end they told us A is attend, N is not attending, P is passing, and F is not passing. So instead of using the the little complement notation, they just gave us a new letter. Um, but it is the complement. So I want you to pause the video, try to get your different probabilities here. All right, so we were given three probabilities. I did not give myself a ton of space on this one, so I'm going to move it over a little bit. So first sentence here, we see attending, we see passing, no and between them, no or between them. We do have our keyword of given, telling us that this particular probability is a conditional probability. We know they attended, that makes their chance of passing 90%. Sounds like a, a good deal, I'd attend that review session. Um, and given they don't attend, so given not attending, uh, they have a 15% chance of passing the class. Well, holy crap. Uh, this to me already shows this is not an independent event, right? You have a 90% chance of passing if you attend and a 15% if you don't attend. So there's a big relationship between attendance and passing. On um, the last sentence here, the professor estimates that 65% will attend. Nothing about passing or failing. So there's our starting point. One way you can kind of view these Venn diagrams, I don't have a lot of space, so I'm going to make this smaller for a second, is that we're sort of looking at, at the beginning, all students. And this is like a choose-your-own-adventure. So two things can happen with all of our students at the beginning. They can either attend the review session, or they cannot attend the review session. And that's where we start with this first probability. So you start with that the one marginal probability. So if 65% of the students attend the final review session, that means 35% of students are not attending. And then we do this sort of choose your own adventure piece when we go, all right, so now of the students that attended, there are two possibilities, two paths they could follow. They could either end up passing the final or they could end up failing the final, right? And we know these probabilities as well. It says 90% of those who attend are going to pass, which means 10% are going to fail. And for the ones who didn't attend, two options still pass and fail. And we know it's a 15% chance of passing, which means 85% of them must fail. So we can fill in the beginning of this tree simply using complements. You need three given, uh, two of these conditional probabilities and one marginal, and we can fill in the whole table um, or the whole tree. And all we have to do is get our ands. Now, if you remember. Our AND formula looks like this. Take the conditional, multiply by the given piece. So that's exactly what we're doing here. We know they're A, oh, multiply those together, and we'll get the ANDs. So all you're going to do is come down this particular branch, and you'll multiply together as you go. So this times this equals that. So as multiplication, I'm going to bust out my calculator again, try to see it in this poorly lit bunk bed that I'm sitting in. <laughs> 0.585. Um, and then we do the same thing down the next row, 0 0.65. Here I'll write down what I'm multiplying, 0 0.65 times that 0 0.1, which will give me 0 0.065. 
Uh, then we'll have 0.35 times the 0.15. which is 0 0.0525, 0 0.35 times our 0 0.85. Ah, I made a mistake in my calculator, um, which is equal to 0.2975. Now, you want to check your work. You have a one, qu oh God, that's the giant pen. Um, you have a quick check. Just like with your Venn diagram, right? You just got all four of the ands. So they should sum to one. Now what happens after you make this tree, and on the warm and fuzzy questions, this is exactly how it's going to go. You're going to make this tree. There's going to be a number of points, like six or eight points, just for making the tree properly, knowing how to make these different uh, probability notations, which won't be given. You'll have to fill them in. We'll see it on the next page. But this is, this is what it's going to look like. Afterwards, you're going to have a couple questions to answer. So in this case, um, and those questions tend to, be, tend to be very similar every time. We're being asked what percentage passed the exam. So for the opposite marginal, we had attending and not attending. Now we want to know about passing and not passing for the whole class. And you're going to be given the other conditionals as well. Given they passed, what's the probability that they attended? So this is the opposite of the conditionals that we had here in the table, right? We just reversed their order. So those are the, the two pieces that I always ask for afterwards on the exam. You have two options for doing this. One, you could use the ands and do all the things on the fly. Another option, which is what I'm going to force you to walk through on the worksheet on Tuesday, is that we can go ahead, if we have all four ands, we could make our good friend the contingency table, which we are very good at working with. So. Um, the contingency table is something we can always fall back on. So remember, when we make our contingency table, we need A and P to overlap. So we're going to put A and P in opposite rows and columns. So that way they can overlap. We can put our 0.585 on there. And then we need next to A to be the opposite of A, so not attending. And next to P to be the opposite of P, so failing. And then we can add our total sections. So then we can fill all these out. A and F is 0 0.065. P and N is 0 0.0525 and 0.2975. And we can get all the pieces that we want. We want the probability that somebody passed, which is right here. So in order to get that, all I need to do is add the two little joint probabilities there on that row together, which I am trying to do slowly. All right, so we got 0.6375. Uh, and we do one minus that. Or we can add the other two. We get point. 3625. We can add down our little rows. Uh, what's funny is we run down, um, add down this column. We're going to just get back out the 65% who attended. And adding down this, we'll get back our 35 that didn't. So it's also nice because our contingency table gives us a way to check our work again if we didn't feel really comfortable. And now our two questions here are easy. Pass the final? Well, I already have that number. 63.75% of them pass the final exam. And our conditional, again, we can use our conditional formula. The conditional is just the and divided by what we know. So in this case, A and P divided by that 0.6375. So that, that's it. Let me get that number for us so we can finish this problem up. Uh, remember that you can go ahead and do this sort of intuitively for the conditional. Uh, you could say, given they passed the exam, okay, so we're in this category, that's my whole, what's the probability that they attended? This is the part I care about. There's the part of my whole, and you don't have to use the actual probability formulas. Um, the only thing else on this page is this crazy ass looking formula called Bayes' Rule. Uh, Bayes' Rule allows us to have marginals and uh, conditionals in one direction and use them to find the conditional in the opposite direction. Um, but our tree diagram allows us to do that in a more visual way, a way that lets us sort of explore the whole problem and is not nearly as gross as this particular formula. So um, if you really want to, you know, play around, you could try using this formula instead to calculate the probability that we just found. Um, but like I said, I love the tree diagram. I think it does this quicker. Um, in fact, I've taught graduate level students the tree diagram because I think at that level, 
it's just nice to, to see instead of plugging into a formula that you don't, that, I don't know, it's pretty gross. So that ends this section, or I'll pause it here. I will give you another video for the last, or for the second tree diagram, and we'll go ahead and do the third tree diagram together in class before the worksheet on Tuesday.